Welcome to the second Developer Tools Community Update uh, meeting. Um, yeah, I'm Josh from DevRel. I uh, got a couple other individuals on the call as well from the tooling team. Uh, yeah, uh, Fong, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi there, guys. I'm Fong. I'm on the DevTools team, mostly working in Rust, but this time I'll be showing off a JavaScript CLI tooling in this presentation. Awesome. Serhi? Hey, yeah, my name is Serhi. I work in a DevTool Teams too, and my focus for the last few months was WorkspacesJS and near SDKJS. Yeah, and I will talk about it today too. Awesome. And then Austin, you want to give a quick intro? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm Austin. I'm a product manager um, here at Pagoda on the, the DevTools team as well. Um, and I, actually, should I just segue right into what we're going to talk about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just yeah, segue right in. I just want to let everyone know if at any time you have any questions or comments or any ideas, anything you want to talk about, um, go ahead and post it in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, click on that throw a question out there, we will answer them as we go. And then after the presentation, we'll do like an AMA where you can ask anything. So at any time, if you wanna ask a question about what we're talking about or anything tooling related, please feel free to drop it and we'll we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, so yeah, go, go ahead, take it away, Austin. Awesome, sweet, thanks, Josh. So um, so today, yeah, we're, I'm just gonna quickly cover the agenda that we're gonna go through. So one, I'd, I'd just like to talk about what we've done since the last time, just like a super quick, uh, super quick um, smattering of, of what we've shipped. Um, reiterate on just what the, uh, the tools team vision is. We had an offsite where we set that. Um, talk about what our focus is gonna be over the next uh, couple of months. And then most of the time is actually gonna be Serhi and, and, and Fong talking about the JavaScript SDK, which we're obviously fired up to, to chat about. So. Um, I'm going to jump right in. So since since the last time, we've shipped quite a bit, um, and we we've touched almost all of the projects that our our, our teams take care of. Um, so yeah, just a few highlights: the SDK RS, um, Austin Abel is is working on um, getting the 4.0 release ready to go. Hopefully, that'll be next week. Um, so super excited um, for that to go live. Um, Workspaces RS shipped a new version there, 0.3. Um, Fong, a lot of the teams working on working on that. Um, uh, Miraculous has been making a ton of changes to the JSON RPC client, a lot of cleanup, a lot of ergonomic um, improvements. Um, Workspaces JS, you'll see a little bit of that today um, in conjunction with the SDK, um, just getting the Workspaces JS close to feature parity with RS um, and making it super useful to, uh, to make testing um, uh, as, as easy as possible. And then another one that we're, we're really excited to share soon is, has just been laying some of the groundwork around our ABI. Um, we know that that's table stakes. A lot of the other chains have that already. And, and um, we've been able to spend a, quite a bit of time scoping what that would look like um, and just working through some of the implementation details that we're, uh, we're gonna take to the community so that we can make sure that we're, uh, we're, we're solving the right problems. Um, so we've been, we've been extremely busy since the last time we chatted. And the other thing we did was set our vision. And, and the way we did this was basically starting with the Pagoda vision. So. Um, just a world where today's startups and tomorrow's unicorns succeed and realizing a limitless opportunities of Web3 and, and delivering its value to uh, billions of people. And we just kind of picked this apart. We put notes on it. We talked about what we liked, what we didn't like, what we could actually contribute to. And we laid out on a board just the life cycle of our products, everything that we could possibly work on, um, all how all the tools fit together. And what we ended up arriving at is a pretty simple vision of just deliver the intuitive, productive, and reliable tools needed for Web3 development. So the reason why I just wanted to share this is if you're wondering what our team takes care of, who we are, um, what we care about, what we hope to achieve, this is sort of our guiding principle and our, our, our vision. Cool. So um, what we're actually going to be focusing on tangibly to try and make that vision come true, um, the same three things that I talked about the last time we were here making near the most accessible blockchain for Web2 developers, uh, streamlining and improving the developer experience for creating full stack apps, and just enabling better product-based uh, decision-making for our, our tools products. So um, the first piece is really what we're gonna spend almost the entire time today talking about. And this is our JavaScript SDK and, and, and Workspaces JS. So um, I think I just might stop talking and I'm going to pass it over to Sarah, he, who's done all of the work uh, with the team and Bo, who's, who's not here, because uh, I think it's like 2am for him right now. So 
Um, they're going to walk through, um, uh, or Sarah, he's going to walk through a couple of examples and just point us to where some of the discussions are um, in, uh, in GitHub so that we can get as much feedback as possible. Um, but yeah, uh, Sarah, he's going to walk us through some examples and, and really just taking a step back, this is going to unlock a ton of brand new developers to get started building smart contracts. So we're really excited about it. Huge, huge priority. And yeah, I promise I'm actually going to stop talking now and, and pass it to Serhi. Um, let me try and share the right tab. Let me know if you can see a, uh, this is going to be a little bit imperfect, but we're going to roll with it. Um, actually, let me try. Can, can everyone see that screen okay? Yes, it's create and build smart contracts with JS SDK, the GitHub yes. discussion, right? Amazing. And how is how's the view? Can, can everyone read that or is it? A smaller text. If you could bump it a little bit. It's already bumped. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so um, now we will try like together to understand what it takes to build a smart contract with the use of near SDK JavaScript, uh, what you should expect, like what developer experience you, you should expect today and what you should expect in a month or two. Uh, so uh, right now, everything is pretty simple. Uh, you can start your project just like any other JavaScript-based project with uh, NPM, with NPM in it. Uh, Add near SDK JS as a dependency, uh, and uh, then uh, write your code and add the build script to the um, package JSON. We will talk about it a bit later. Uh, also, you will need to add this config, npm install, yarn build, and you're done. Uh, as a result of uh, execution of this command, uh, yarn build, you will get the contract.base64 file, which is a smart contract. Uh, usually, yes, if you try to develop with near, uh, you know that the smart contract is a uh, wasm awesome file, but uh, not this time. This time we have uh, like a unique enclaved architecture. So this file is actually will be deployed to another smart contract and it will be, it will work inside of that smart contract. Um, so uh, something that you need to know is that this build process is, it, 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 it consists, this project, like this project, it consists of two separate parts. So the first part is the SDK itself. It's uh, something that you will import and use in your JavaScript files. And the second thing is the contract builder. It's, uh, it's a separate CLI, but it's integrated inside of this dependency. So uh, that's why you're able to do something like this. Yeah, you, you're uh, able to execute yarn near SDK build, and it will, it will convert your JavaScript code into the base 64 encoded uh, smart contract. Um, also about this uh, bubble file, uh, this one that you need to add, we are like doing our best to delete this step. So make it a bit e easier, but for now, just don't forget to add it because we are using uh, Babel inside of the rollup to uh expand uh the decorators and yeah so this is the experience that you will have now uh please leave a comments like this is the discussion on uh, github it's it, it lives inside of, inside of the near sdk js discussions please leave your comments if you uh, can suggest us a better way to create project to build projects, to uh, maybe expand, add new helpers to our SDK. We are really happy to hear that. Uh, one of the things that we are considering 
is uh, that we can initialize a project with a CLI command, something like near project init, and it will generate you uh, a standard NPM project with dependencies, with all the config files, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the downside of this is that people will not understand what they're doing at some extent. Yeah, they will uh, get the result faster, but uh, they can struggle later, like when they will develop and build and deploy the, their smart contract. Uh, okay, so any any comments, questions? Like one or... one quick question someone had is: yeah. uh, is, is there a reason that you're switching from npm to yarn when installing dependencies and building? Uh, so there is no. Uh, you can use both npm and yarn. Like uh, you can instant instead of uh, npm here, you can do uh, yarn add uh, near sdkjs, and you can initialize project with yarn. You can use yarn everywhere; it's not a problem. I'm personally using yarn, so yeah, it should be fine. Cool. Other than that, I don't think. Oh, wait a minute. We got two questions. Um, will the deploy JavaScript contract behave similar to Wasm ones? Yeah, they uh, they are. There is some differences. Uh, so uh, probably the main difference uh, and the main advantage uh, in behavior is that since this uh, smart contract, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript smart contract, will live inside of another smart contract, all the calls, uh, contract uh, cross contract calls, will be synchronous. Yeah, you know that if you try to build a contract with assembly script or Rust, you know that it's uh, a bit hard. Yeah, and uh, to make a uh, cross contract call, uh, here it will be easier. I will show an example a bit later how that can be achieved. And yeah, so synchronous execution of uh, storage updates. This is probably the uh, main uh, the the main difference. Yeah. Also, of course, you will uh have differences on how you call these contracts how you deploy but we will explain it a bit later cool uh, another question is do is there an option to also uh deploy a wasm it is yeah uh so <clears throat> this is uh, we made a decision to use this enclave design because if you want to uh deploy uh, JavaScript runtime together with the contract, it weighs a lot, and you will need to pay like several uh, dollars for each deployment. And since we want to make it as easy and as cheap as possible, we are using this design. But uh, theoretically, it is possible. And if you want to try it, try it. Uh, in our repo, you can check the um, uh, branch that is called standalone. And standalone branch is producing that wasm file, so it's converting, basically, it's converting JavaScript smart contracts into that wasm files. Yeah. But they are like huge. Yeah. Uh, one more question: Is there any gas trade-off for executing inside of another contract? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like uh, you will spend gas the same way. Also, if uh, your call, for example, is increasing the uh, number of space that your contract is using, you should attach deposit to each call. So in terms of gas, dep gas deposits, it will work uh, in a similar fashion. Cool. Uh, I think that's all the questions right now. Oh, someone said, um, this is a similar to the Aurora structure when you have a smart yes. contract executing a code in one shard. Correct. Uh, yeah. Oh, one more. It will cost. Will it cost the same amount of gas as if it was a Rust contract? Uh, to be honest, I cannot guarantee you this, but it will be similar. Like no much trade-offs, no big trade-offs. 
Um, another question came in, if the keys of a JavaScript or JSVM account are compromised, will all the dApps that have been deployed to it also be compromised? Um, I mean, if you're losing a key to account that you used to deploy a smart contract, yes, you will lose the access to the smart contract, of course. This is your only way to update it and sometimes to call it if you made such a design. So yeah, you need to keep your keys safe always. Cool, I think that's uh, all for right now, but yeah, um, please continue to drop questions. We will continue to answer them throughout the presentation. Um, what are the plans to secure JavaScript key or JSVM key? I'm not sure. Uh, there is like, uh, maybe the person just got it wrong a bit. So there is no such thing as the key for a smart contract. Uh, we are using the standard keys that you used before with your account uh, to deploy to, uh, to JSVM, to JavaScript Virtual Machine Smart Contract. You need standard key from your account and you will use it for basically everything. Um, other accounts will never have access to your state or to your contract. And they will be able only to call it as uh, wasm based uh, smart contracts. Hey, hey Siri, I think I think specifically they're at, um, they're asking about the like the the account like JSVM dot near. Um, so the oh, what would happen? If okay. Um, do, do you want to go yeah, ahead? Yeah, I, I I I got it. Yeah, I got it. So. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, to be able to deploy the contract, you will need a uh, JavaScript contract. Yes, you can have your own contract. You can deploy it and then deploy like 10 JavaScript contracts to it. And they will be able to interact. Uh, everything will be fine. But our idea and the design that we have in our uh, mind, on our minds is that we will have just one main um, GSVM smart contracts, uh, and everybody will deploy uh, uh, their smart contracts, JavaScript smart con contracts, like to this contract. Uh, we are still trying to figure out how we will manage this uh, key. So there is mainly there's two options. So we either deploy GSVM contract and delete all full access keys. So we will guarantee that it will be it will never change yeah or we will uh, keep it safely yeah let's put it this way uh, uh, probably we will uh, move from option two to option one with time and, and this is a prime example of a discussion that needs to happen um so if there i think is there already a github discussion for this specific topic if not it sh we should just create it asap but obviously something we're thinking about um Mm -hmm. Okay, then yeah, like a clear action is um, actually, Ben, if you don't mind creating that discussion to kickstart us, <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Uh, yeah, okay. Any any other questions? I don't see any right now, but yeah, continue to drop them uh, either in the chat or the Q&A section and uh, yeah, we'll continue to answer them as we go. But yeah, if you want to continue. So okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so now when you have a contract, basically the result of our work is uh, the contract base64 file. Uh, the next thing that you probably want to do is to test it, yeah? to write unit tests, integration tests, uh, to make sure that everything works. And for that, we have a beautiful workspaces JS library that will help you to do that uh, easily or relatively easily. Um, so Workspace JS is built to be able to test all the smart contracts for near. Uh, it, it can test uh, smart, contra smart contracts written in Rust, in assembly script, and it can um, test smart contracts written in JavaScript, but with a few tweaks that uh, I will talk about right now. So uh, to be able to uh, set up Workspaces.js, 
uh, you need to follow uh, next steps. Like, of course, uh, you need to install the dependency. We will also install Ava. We are using Test Runner Ava uh, together with Workspaces JS. And uh, yeah, you need to create a test file, uh, modify your uh, package JSON. You can add, you should basically add a test Ava script, install dependencies, and and hit yarn test. Yeah, you're done. So the test file itself looks the same way, uh, looks the next way. Uh, if you use test runners before, probably it will be not a surprise for you that there is like a before function uh, where you prepare the environment. There is after where, where you like clean the environment and there is a, like a, your tests. So uh, to prepare the environment, what do you need to do? Uh, you need to start a local blockchain, uh, we call it a sandbox. Um, uh, so, and you will use it, it's like your personal blockchain, it's uh, clean from the start uh, and uh, you can use it to deploy and call your contracts and test, it, test them this way. Uh, so the first thing that uh, you should understand that you need, you must to deploy JS VM contract if you're using base64 contracts. Yeah, you need this base contract, this uh, other contract uh, to keep uh, all your uh, base64 contracts. Uh, it's available in the nearest DKJS. So just uh, install dependencies and deploy it, uh, take it from this path. Yeah, so it should, it should be easy. Check our examples if you got lost. Um, then uh, you can create a few accounts. This is just a standard accounts and call functions but, because this is basically what you what you want to want to do. Um, yeah. So let's check some uh, tests. Uh, so here we are checking. We're calling, uh, we're, we're doing a view call, and it looks a bit different from a standard workspaces setup, the uh, UGS contract. And then you need to encode uh, your call with the function, with the helper function that we have uh, up here. You can just copy it, and probably we'll move it to some SDK or API library later. Uh, yeah, so you need to encode these uh, parameters. And after that, this is just a standard call to GSVM smart contract that will uh, do all the work for you and execute your base64 JavaScript contract inside of it. Uh, so same goes for uh, view and call functions. They're pretty similar. Try like Try to read the code uh, after this presentation and like understand how it works. Um, um, yeah. So, any any, any questions? I don't think we have any yet, uh, but I will definitely let you know. If there's no questions, I will, uh, I will think that this design is perfect and I will not work on it anymore. Okay, then maybe is we should someone, move... Someone's asking about near API JS. Is okay. that updated as okay. well? No, no, it's not. Unfortunately, uh, so just for you to understand that Near SDK JS was released today, three hours ago. <laughs> so uh, we're still uh, catching up. We are adding helpers to, we will add helpers to Near API JS. We already add, uh, added something to Near CLI and we will like step-by-step -step improve this design because we understand this, that since it works a bit different, uh, we need to, uh, add additional like additional helpers additional functions to our libraries 
Cool. Um, if we deploy a full WASM, can we use it the same as a Rust contract? Um, not sure what, what is the same as the Rust, but yeah, Probably there's like no limitations. Interacting with it, interacting with it, I would imagine. Yes. Once it's compiled yeah, to WASM, then it's, yeah. Yeah, it's no, there's no difference. Like if you're creating a contract that is uh, bundled together with uh, JavaScript runtime, so it's a WASM contract, you're deploying it. And after this, this is just a standard contract for you. Yeah, so the interface is the same. The possibilities is the same, uh, no limitations. You can track transaction in Explorer, et cetera, et cetera. You can uh, do cross contract calls to other contracts that are written in Rust, which is not possible from uh, uh, Base64 contract for now. Cool. Um, how are you going to be able to call other contracts and other shards? Good question. Good question. Uh, we will not call other contracts on other shards because uh, all the smart contracts are deployed to one smart contract and this smart contract always in one shard. Maybe not the same shard, but it doesn't matter. Like means that all, all your enclaved smart contracts are always inside of the, this main smart contract. So sharding will not stop us here. Uh, but as I said, we cannot right now make calls to Rust-based contracts from enclaved contract. So once you're inside that enclave, once you're deployed inside there, you're in your own little universe and you cannot communicate with yes. the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, but not not the same way. You cannot make cross contract calls. So this is the rule for now. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, can you use oracles if they're deployed to? I mean, oracles are just a smart contract, right? Mm. So if these smart contracts are JS based smart contracts deployed deployed in this uh, enclave, then yes. Cool. Yeah. So basically, um, my my recommendation will be like, if you don't want to uh, learn Rust, if you don't know Rust, and you don't want to learn it, and you want to just start quick, this is what you need, uh, should do, like JavaScript. Uh, you can, uh, but uh, you should keep in mind that probably you will need to write all the smart contracts in JavaScript. So you will need to write all the logic and just check that everything everything you need is available inside of the enclaved smart contract as an oracle, for example. Uh, a couple of questions about workspaces. Um, are there utils for workspaces? Utils, uh, not sure. Like there is no, it's a single package now. Uh, I know that we are trying to extend it, but uh, basically, what you can see here is the utils. Is the utils uh, like these functions? It's not in your API JS functions right now, at least. This is the utils uh, that Workspaces JS is providing for you to uh, make these uh, test files uh, small and like easy to write. Cool. Um, will epoch skipping be introduced in Workspaces? Uh, once more. Epoch skipping. So like sk skipping forward, I would imagine, like a fast forward? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe someone, somebody knows answer. Or we can do that after the call. The goal is to definitely have feature parity between workspaces, JS, and RS. Um, it's just a, like a, a resource question, right? Like um, just a bar. we have so many priorities, as, as everyone knows. Um, it, it just may not be the, the next and most immediate thing that we work on, but it's definitely on the roadmap. Uh, another question, is there any negative side effects to using the standalone version of the SDK rather than uh, the price? I'm, I'm assuming they're saying, what, what, uh, aside from the size of the contract, when you deploy it, you know, WASM directly, uh, uh, is there any other, yeah, is there any other uh, downfall or? Uh... Negative. Okay, so yeah, the size is the first one, the inability to call contracts outside of uh, just virtual machine smart contract. 
also no i think what, they, what they're saying is if you if you if you uh, compile it to Wasm and you just deploy oh, it. Oh, Wasm. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, aside from the size it being huge, and you got to pay for that storage. What other? I mean, at that I point, guess, it's it's just a regular okay, contract, okay. right? Yeah. I, uh, theoretically, there is no limitation limitations. So I guess that the main limitations right now will be the fact that uh, this uh, JavaScript SDK is not mature. Uh, we're just releasing it. Uh, so right now, uh, it lacks some uh, functionality that uh, Rust SDK, for example, has. Yeah, so during development, you can face some limitations, but after you've deployed it, uh, I don't think so. Can I, can I just even ask, like, Sari, for, like, clarification on that? So, like, for someone that does want to um, use an Oracle, have cross-contract calls, if they just uh, generate a WASM file from uh, a contract they built using the JavaScript SDK, they would still be able to do that. But what you are suggesting is that um, the not every single tool or every um, like all the bells and whistles from the Rust SDK are available to the developer to make that as easy as possible yes. right now. Yes, right now uh, there are some limitations, but yes, you will be able to use oracles, do the cross contract calls, everything that uh, Rust smart contract can do. Yeah, so maybe we will, uh, with time, we will have both that you will be able to uh, build uh, that base 64 contract and that was some contract and decide like what what uh, what kind of experience you need what kind of functionality you need um, yeah and uh, i will remind i will tell it one more time that it's already available if you will go to the repo check out the standalone branch uh it can it can do it it can uh, make a dot wasm smart contract um how do you know what contracts or apis are available in the enclave all the apis like we have all the apis that are available for uh, javascript uh, for sorry for rust smart contract basically we're using everything that uh, is available on our blockchain. Cool. When, when I'm saying that there's when I'm saying that there are some limitations in APIs, it means not the low level APIs. I mean the high level APIs, some helpers uh, that uh, like uh, making your life easier. Cool. And then um, I, I think a second part to that question is um, there's no like list of all of the smart contracts that have been deployed to the enclave that you can interact with. Correct. Per, per currently, correct uh there is there is oh there is oh, okay yeah how do so you, how do you, uh, uh you can do that uh, okay so uh just uh something you need to understand that this is a, a gs vm smart contract account is a standard account gs vm contract is a standard contract and it has its state and the state is divided between the contracts that, that are deployed to it so you can get uh, with a view function of this GSVM uh, smart contract, you could get a list of all the smart contracts that are deployed and you can check the state. And right now the state is in JSON, so you can even view this state. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me, let, let, yeah, let us know if that uh, clarifies or answers your question or if you have any clarif clarifying uh, follow-ups. Um, another question, are there any limitations to using external NPM packages, i.e. random numbers? Uh, in Rust, you can only use crates that support the WASM32 unknown unknown. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you can use external packages, no problem, but they should not depend on something that is browser-specific or node-specific. So basically everything that is pure JS uh, should be able to work in your smart contract, which is a huge advantage because in uh, assembly script, you do not have uh, a lot of uh, options, a lot of dependencies. You don't have uh, like a million packages in NPNJS that you can use. So yeah, it's a big advantage and uh, try to use it. There is an example in examples folder near SDKJS examples folder 
that is using an external dependency. Well, you followed up with uh, just making sure that this is the same between the standalone uh, and the enclave version, correct? Uh, the same, what, what do you mean the same? Um, the the npm packages you can use them in the enclave as well yeah no no limitations yeah, no difference no difference how does this javascript sdk compare to the assembly script sdk pros and cons okay so i'll yeah so pros and cons uh i've told i've already told that in assembly script basically the situation is the same you can use external dependency but only if they are uh written in assembly script there's no that not that much uh, such libraries in javascript you have everything you need um assembly script is a language that is still in development that that is why uh next to uh, uh, like in our documentation we are saying that assembly script is not ready for financial applications and uh, javascript theoretically can be yeah, like if we will pass some security checks, I guess that it's theoretically possible because this is a mature language that is used, widely used. Um, also, JavaScript is probably easier <laughs> and it's just uh, more uh, uh, spread. Yeah, more people know JS. So this is the reason why they will want to use it. I hope so. Cool. Uh, I have one clarifying question. Um, what I meant is, for example, being you can't call ref finance from the contract, you would probably need to deploy a DEX to the JavaScript smart contract. Is there going to be a list of contract deployed there that you can call in sync? Um, so if I understand this right, yes, yes, you will be able to do that but uh, you can you will be able to do that if you will package it as a uh, dot blossom yeah uh, yeah by, by the way uh, we really want to hear your thoughts on what's the best design and which one we should uh, develop more uh, intensively like the standalone design when where you have uh, that blossom contract that is big and expensive to deploy, but it's uh, more functional or the JS smart contract that is lightweight, cheap, but has uh, some limitations. Yeah, please leave comments in these discussions that we are showing here uh, in near SDK JS repo. Cool. Awesome. Um, I'm just conscious of time. We've got 15 minutes left. Should we? Okay. Let me take oh, yeah. a look at the example. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's check the example and yeah. And after that, we'll do it. Okay. So I have a few projects here. So the first one is the status message project. Project. Now we'll explore it. Briefly, because basically I've told everything, but maybe you'll want to see it in a, like in real real life. Um, okay, can you can you see the text, the code? Yeah. Oh, I can only see, I can see your uh, nav on the left, but I can't see any code on the right. Oh, there's because there is no any code. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. There we okay. go. There we go. Now it should be good. Okay, so this is the project. It's pretty simple. It's a standard, as I said, it's a standard JS project. Uh, in package JSON, all we've done is we've added the dependency for near SDK JS, dependency, the dev dependencies for our testing libraries, uh, near workspaces, of course. And we've added two scripts, near SDK build and Ava for testing. Uh, our smart, con smart contract is uh, pretty small and easy. So all you need here is a nearby engine call and few decorators. And uh, basically everything else is a plain 
uh, JavaScript code. Yeah, maybe there is also an environment to do logs and maybe some other low low level stuff if you will need if you will need it. So this smart contract is pretty simple. It has records. Records are uh, can be set by the caller. And basically, uh, every caller can set a message, a status message for itself and read this message, of course. You can read this uh, message by uh, read get status function and the account ID. Um, so, yeah, looks pretty simple to me. Uh, any, any questions about code? uh someone asks uh, so there's no more sign unsigned integers i need to import uh if i'm not mistaken no no this is like all you need okay um yeah and uh also, also uh, here is a yeah here is a, uh, sorry yeah here's a build folder Go ahead. and after after you execute yarn uh, any sdk build uh, you will get these files so this base 64 file uh, is your uh, smart contract ready for deployment and this file is basically expanded version of it expanded version of what we saw sometimes you need it to just you know to understand better what you wrote uh, yeah so we will know where to check it uh, any other questions? Yeah, someone asked uh, if they can write their contract in TypeScript and then pre-compile to JS. Uh, no, theoretically, no limitations. We do not have samples yet, but we are planning to add TypeScript support. Yeah, but you you can try if you basically if you will be able to convert, uh, compile basically your TypeScript file to this, uh, like no limitations. Um, cool. And then um, I think some someone was asking if there's any smart contract examples with logging and nested con uh, slash cross contract calls. Okay. Yes. Yes. There is. I will show it right now because this is the plan. <laughs> um, so we have an example, like the simplest example possible of the smart contract uh, cross smart uh, smart contract call uh, it has the same uh, structure nothing like uh, really uh, uh, different uh, we added a ready status message base 64 contract from previous example so we will we will use it and we have uh, our on call contract here so the idea is that the on-call contract will check the status of the uh, status contract for the person. And then if this person is available, so it's, it's done here, like we are doing uh, a call to uh, status message as that near. Uh, if uh, the status is available, then we're setting this person on call. If it's not, we're not, we're not setting this person on call. And also we can check who's on call right now. So this is the example, the simplest example of the cross contract call uh, inside of the JS uh, smart contract. Uh, it's also available in examples folder. You can, you can check it there and you can play with it. Improve it, uh, write pull requests add new examples, write your awesome projects, everything you want. Cool, looks clean, someone says. Yeah, yeah, JavaScript, simple and hopefully reliable. Um, okay, so uh, that's it for me. The next, uh, that, uh, the next thing that we want to talk about is how you can interact with uh, enclaved JavaScript smart contracts from the CLI. And uh, Fong, who's the uh, author of this functionality, will tell more. Yeah, sure. Um, let me steal your screen for, for now. Uh -huh. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. 
yeah. All right, so yeah, so this will just be, this is the discussion board for um, how you interact with the JS smart contract through the CLI. Uh, we currently have like five um, commands that you can use that are specific to just JS itself. Um, yeah, like uh, I'll, I'll go through an example later with this too, with uh, what Sir he did with like the status message. But uh, yeah, these will be just like uh, regular calls into the JS VM and they will have some, I mean, these are just like helper stuff on the CLI itself. So you don't have to make some raw calls um, that you normally have to do. So let me show you how that all looks like in a workflow like manner for deploying to deploying a uh, status message contract to the JSBM. So uh, normally you just have near um, when you're Could actually you trying to larger. Could larger? You jump up? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let me see. Per perfect. Thanks. Yeah. There we go. So normally you just have near, and that would just be your entryway to go through every single uh, subcommand. But um, for the JavaScript uh, one, we need to specifically go into JS because it has a bunch of other parameters that need to be specified um, than what you normally have in the regular near CLI. Um, so to deploy the status message contract, we just do deploy and then specify the account we want to associate the contract to in the enclave. And we just specify that with account ID. Uh, then we should specify the path to the file it's, or to the contract bytes itself, which is the status message that base64. Uh, one additional thing with deploy is that you do need to allocate um, a certain amount of balance to the enclave so that it could store this contract itself. So you have to do the deposit and then specify 0.1 near. It's not going to take up 0.1 near, it will refund um the difference that it ends up using so that let's run that and it will also give you back the transaction and you can view that in the explorer um, then we'll make a call into init itself and this is my count init and um and it doesn't take any arguments so we just call that I specify the signer which is just, just give me a test net test user test net again um, calls also modify state. So that means that we also need to specify a deposit so that um, if it ends up taking more state on the enclave itself, you can actually allocate it properly. So that should run. And afterwards we should be able to set a status onto the contract itself. And yeah, okay. So let's set hello world to it. So let's specify contract and then set status. Then we'll want to specify our signer yet again. And then the arguments to it. This is just gonna be a JSON um, arguments like you normally get with hello, with, um, with near CLI call. So we're just gonna specify uh, hello world. And yet again, since we're modifying state, we need to specify deposit. Cool. And once that's done, uh, we should be able to view it and get back Hello World. Yep. One thing I noticed that's a little different in this is that you're passing an array instead of uh, an object or a JSON object. Um, oh, no, it's just, um, that's just how the, the parameter is set in the, in the contract itself. But you can pass in an, uh, a JSON object itself if you wanted to. Oh, OK, cool. It's just any JSON uh, string. Gotcha. So let's call into view itself and then get status and specify the count. And then we'll specify, um, yeah, the, the arguments or which, which um, status message uh, account we want to grab from. So it's just going to be this one. And we don't need to specify deposit since this is just a view call. Yeah, and that gets us hello world that we set before. Um, now, uh, once that's all done, let's say you don't want that contract to be live anymore. Well, you can just do, you can just remove it itself and 
it will return you the any deposit it has um it has uh it has on the enclave itself so you'll receive back all your storage deposit now um as you can see right here it's using this particular contract for the jsvm but that's just the default um for testnet if you want to specify your own uh jsvm contract that you deployed to some other account you can uh do um let's say i already just had this let's say uh, you can just specify like JSVM and like um, your own JSVM contract account, like test user testnet. If I deployed my own JSVM contract there, so all this is like uh, pretty much built in already. If you just want to use JSVM .testnet instead, and later on JSVM .near if you want to go on mainnet. But yeah, besides that, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have any questions on that. I think Jacob only had one. It was kind of like a follow-up question I had. Um, the arguments are not named like they are with Rust and assembly script contracts. I think it's in that same kind of format of like key value. Oh, all right. Um, I believe that you should be able to specify key value. Correct me if I'm wrong, Suri. Like uh, it should just be like a JSON um, set of parameters. And like the JSVM contract should be able to parse it itself and apply it to the. Yeah, it, it should be possible. Yeah. But like, uh, I mean, even uh, in the Rust, um, when you're calling us a Rust smart contract, you don't necessarily need to specify the named args for um, this, for the, yeah, the, yeah, the name args into the callable itself. So, it should roughly work the same. Like they're, um, yeah, they should be like pretty much serialized the same and like um, be sent to the proper smart contract call or function. Cool. Um, looks like JavaScript deployment is only a function call to the JavaScript virtual machine contract. Does that mean that one account ID could conceivably have contracts deployed on multiple JSVM instances simultaneously? Uh, yes, it should be possible. Like um, uh, by multiple JSVM instances, you mean like multiple JSVM contracts deployed to the chain? Then yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's just the account ID is associated inside the enclave itself. So you, your local account that you have, like test user .testnet, that won't that won't actually store any of the contract bytes. Cool. Um, this is an interesting question. So the 30% gas fees that are earned by DAP developers um, are usually sent to the contract owners. Um, is for the JavaScript VM, is that going to be sent to the JSVM account or are they stored on the JSVM account? And then the JSVM smart contract has like a data container that keeps track of how much near and what accounts own which. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you guys thought about that at all? Oh. Uh -huh. No, I, I guess, yeah, no. yeah, I guess yeah, not for now. Yeah, but it's a really good suggestion. Yeah, it's something that user wants to get and needs to get. Cool, awesome. Thanks for thanks for flagging that issue. Um, yeah, please please post that in the discussion on GitHub so we don't lose that. I, I, was, I was definitely going to say, could I ask you to create a discussion around that so we don't lose that thought? And just like echoing that this is like version 0 0.1. <laughs> so a, a lot <laughs> yeah. of this is probably, if we have a massive amount of usage, obviously something like that would probably be prioritized. So, um, uh, but please open the discussion now. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, we got two minutes left. Did we cover everything that we, we wanted to get to on? Uh... Uh, on your side, Austin, Serhi, and Pong. I'm good, Austin. I think so. All, all I was going to plug at the end was just what we're focusing on immediately. So it's obviously this JavaScript SDK getting this out the door. Um, Workspaces RS 4.0. Expect to see something. Uh, uh, expect to see a release come very soon uh, next week, hopefully. Um, and then focusing on the on the ABI as well. Um, so. Uh, I think that's it. I'd love to just say a huge thank you to Serhi and Bo, who's not here for a ton of work on this JavaScript SDK to get it to where it is. And and and, and Fong, thank you for jumping in and uh, uh, putting your JavaScript hat on with the with the CLI work uh, to get the interaction working. So 
Um, yeah, massive thank you to the entire team and, and a huge, huge thank you to the community um, for these amazing questions with a new, like a new product where a new tool, um, we definitely expected a lot of discussion and, and you all didn't disappoint. So just another reminder, continue to have these discussions in GitHub. We're gonna try and have all of our discussions in GitHub um, uh, and uh, we'll try to improve this and super excited to see what everyone builds. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, for joining. Again, continue the conversation on GitHub. Please give us feedback. Show us examples of things you've made, uh, ways in which we can improve. Uh, yeah, we, we are basically guiding our development process on community feedback. So please participate and help us uh, shape our future. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Fong, Serhi, Austin. Uh, yeah, lo love, uh, uh, love this discussion. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm st stoked about the JavaScript SDK and where it can go from here. So uh, cool. Yeah. Share with your web two friends. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Well, have a great day, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys. Bye guys.